created to entertain, educate, and evolve the modern day deer hunter. Hey, I just wanted to jump on here real quick and plug in a small disclaimer about one of the topics on our conversation here in this podcast as we know it's a little bit of a hot button issue there is some talk in this episode about shooting deer in the head which we know is people have strong opinions about on both sides and we just thought it was necessary to bring it to the attention that um, you know, we're going to keep this an honest platform. We said that from day one, and this is just honest guys sitting around talking about deer hunting. Uh, I know a lot of people are not in favor about shooting game in the head. Myself, personally, I never have and never would. I do not consider myself that good of a marksman. That being said, I know multiple people that year in, year out, that is their target. And so anybody that uh, wants to comment on this or has an opinion is welcome to go to our Facebook page when this episode is posted and, you know, start a conversation or express any views or concerns they have on this topic. And we, you know, I just didn't want this to come off the wrong way. Uh, We were, you know laughing it up and having a good time sitting around in the garage having some beers and we felt that it could have potentially came off um you know disrespectful to the game that we pursue and to people that uh, have the strong opinion in the side of to not take headshots but then again like i said there's people on the other side of that argument so just thought it was necessary to plug in a small disclaimer here uh, everybody have a great weekend now that it's hunting season. I hope everybody's got the opportunity to get out in the woods. Uh, I've just been out for my first time and realized that I have some adjustments to make to my, uh, gear set up and some work to do, but it's hunting season and we're going full bore now. So we'll have two episodes up a week, hopefully every week from here on out through the deer hunting season and enjoy the show thanks for listening yeah totally yeah. gather that when i weld it's on accident yeah it means i did something <laughs> horribly wrong <Yeah. laughs> electricians should not be welding <laughs> oh that's a nice parlay into uh, what you do this is the first time you've been over here my good friend scott lifelong deer hunting yeah one of my longest running deer hunting friends yeah, no doubt. Middle school. Yeah, probably we were trying to slay deer out we there. We didn't. We didn't have cars. No, hell no. <laughs> I was getting dropped off. We were sighting in my rifle. Kept yeah. jamming. We, you, that must have been one of our parents. Did that like the day before? How did your gun get to my house from school? I think my dad dropped me off or something. There you go. In his '95 Dodge Ram. So, and that thing was, like, pretty new. It must have been 98 <laughs> or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that young. truck. Yeah. Yeah. That's, awesome. that's the one my brother beat the dog shit out of after you it got handed out to him. Right. You didn't uh, just bring your guns to school? Nope. Like, I grew up, we were I grew up, up north, man. Ones. Like, I, we, everybody, it was, like, a known thing. I suppose when we Come were in high season? school and we had trucks, we yeah. would have shotguns in them. I was yeah. in, uh, we weren't supposed to, but we certainly did. senior year of high school, uh, the local DNR CO started an outdoor club at the yeah. high school. 
and I joined it, and a couple buddies of mine did. And uh, I remember I had we were going to shoot trap at a trap club. It was like a Saturday afternoon, so we all took our shotguns to school, you know, and we were all going to meet up, and then we were going out there. Yeah. And then I get home, and uh, a friend of mine in high school, her mom had seen us at the parking lot with our shotguns and called my mom, like, instantly. And, like, <laughs> I just want to let you know, he had his shotgun <laughs> at school. It's like, I was in the outdoor club with one of the teachers <laughs> from the high school and the CO for awesome. the area. And it's like. Yeah, it was, when I when I was in high school, it was like, I grew up up north. You know, we, ha- we had opening day rifle season off from school because yeah. nobody would show up. And, like, it was a known thing. Basically, it, during de- gu- especially rifle season, if you were to walk out into the parking lot and start popping trunks, everybody's trunk had oh, a gun. Oh, yeah, in I it. Bet. That's <laughs> awesome. Right. Or bows or Yeah, guns, knives, bows. Or <laughs> yeah, there's tons of <laughs> What the hell else are you supposed to be doing? If you don't have that stuff in your truck, you're the kids getting in trouble. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. No, that's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, drugs. You didn't have guns. It was all the time. You know, <laughs> right. I would show up to school, especially during all winter long, you know, shotgun in the trunk, and get out of school, head over to my buddies, go rabbit hunting for a couple hours. You know? Yeah. That's the way it was. It was hilarious. And like, now, it, the things that, like, if if anybody found out now you had a gun in your trunk out oh, in front yeah. of a whole oh, school, God. we don't Holy even want to go, go down that road. It's just going to. It was just gonna make me <laughs> depressed. What I was getting at is nice. You're sitting in tonight. You're in the trades too. Yeah, I'm a lineman. We got a lot of trades guys that listen to the show. Really? Guys in Indiana, Wisconsin, uh, Ohio. A lot of Midwest trade guys that send messages in, listen to the show. A lot of guys. Oh, in they, Michigan. Me- they can message you, talk to people and stuff. Yeah, through Facebook and Instagram and through uh, email. Really? Yeah. People message in and comment on stupid shit that we say. and I don't think any linemen are going to be listening uh, for the next month or so. Oh, Jesus. Because they're all going on the Hurricane Irma. Yeah. 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 Irma? Yeah. I imagine a bunch of folks down in, like, Houston and all that. Oh, yeah. There's – yeah, everybody's There's pretty work much for up. now. I mean, yeah. Who knows? It's bad, though. You know, every, everybody's – tools up early and gets down there and uh, you know they'll put some crews down there and they'll ride the storm out other crews will get staged a little further north and stuff yeah i'd definitely be all over it but uh trying to get into edison i got an interview on monday so staying back you you were in the you went to hurricane katrina right yep to that 2005 yep that was crazy right (laughs) yeah It's pretty wild, yeah. Break that down for me real quick because that was a pretty – I was young then. I was an apprentice. I mean, shit, we we just left. the. They're like, hey, uh, we're going on Hurricane Katrina. I'm like, all right, cool. Packed my bags, got in a damn truck, drove 16 hours a day by myself in a digger truck. It was so hot in there. It felt like the. It felt like there was a bonfire right next to my seat, <laughs> sweating my ass off. It's a good thing I was young back then. I mean, get down there and total devastation. The water, the floodwaters had brought up all kinds of snakes and ants and all kinds of nasty shit. Uh, you know, I had never, I had never gotten uh, poison ivy in my life. I was miserable down there, man. We worked our ass off, sleeping in tents with like 2,000 people in it. Don't know when your next meal is. Don't know if you're getting a shower. Sleeping in a tent. Every two days, maybe I get a shower. I heard guys were put up in horse stables and stuff, too, Oh, right? yeah. We, we had parked our trucks in a pig farm and shit for a couple couple days, slept on the trucks, slept on cots outside. And then you come home and hear about how lazy union workers are. Oh, yeah, are. exactly. <laughs> shit, dude. Put my ass on the line for those storms. I was I was in mill rights for a while, and nothing pisses you off more than oh, lazy bastards. And, uh, you know, right. like, mm-hmm. Go to hell. Yeah. Come and get some, man. Give like, yourself a try. When I was in that, I, wor- I, was, I worked like in it. a trust factory for a while. I was – literally like running my ass off for like nine ten hours a day like running <laughs> and oh yeah uh, people bitch about unions being lazy i just want to punch them in the face <laughs> anything anybody's ever got is because of something a union has fought for yeah exactly. 40 hour work weeks benefits right retirement just fair pay right 
so critical. Backbone of America. Especially nowadays, man, people will take their employees, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's a cutthroat world. If you don't have somebody, if you're very fortunate to work for a company that you know and trust the people, you're a very fortunate individual uh, because a lot of the companies, man, is only about numbers or things of that nature. And if you don't have any protection, man, it's crazy to see, like, my wife being a designer, you know. Yeah. It's, like, just brutal. Yeah, her. Yep. How they treat, you know, sometimes how the employees are treated or how they're compensated for the amount of work that they do. And we're talking about people coming out of school with seventy, eighty thousand dollars in debt and student loans, and they're paying these people shit wages. Yep. <laughs> and the people up top though, their their uh profit margins are increasing, their bonuses and shit are through the roof. Right. But even the I mean, even the union trades are getting broke down. Everything's mm -hmm. just on a downward. My wife's a school teacher. That's she went to college for five years. She's almost got a you know she's working on a master's. She was working on it. Then we had kids. Now she's just starting to go back to it. But the for what she makes and she hasn't had a raise in three years. And the last raise she got was like one percent. Inflation's three percent a year. Yep. You know, Bullshit. dude. It's simple math. And somebody's <laughs> somebody's taking it. Right, you know, yeah, exactly. It's a work. No, I don't think it's us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely not me. <laughs> no, hell no. Yeah, our uh, audience can know that union and non-union members are welcome. We're right. all reasonably. Yeah, you can hate union if you want. Okay. We're all reasonably, uh, I guess, understanding of individual mm -hmm. oh, situations because yeah. yep. you know the groups of guys that just can't or won't. Can't, refuse to get along and that's never been us we all have complete different yeah, exactly. scenarios but yeah. i'm one of the rare guys that's non-union that's like a huge union fan that's awesome i'm like fortunate to well, have, you work at a good shop i work it's at a, i work at right, a, i yeah. work for a good family-owned business that's awesome right. yeah. and they and i'm very fortunate right there not are. very many people are in that situation and you better have a damn union backing your ass up if you're not yeah, yeah. it's like i i always worked other than when I was a millwright, which was when I worked at the trust factory, I always worked for small companies. You know, knew the owners like were in there and all that, and good folks. Yep. You know, the one time I had any issues, I just quit and went to another place. That's one of the bonuses about being skilled trades. People don't understand. It's like, I like people. They're like, oh, I had my like third interview for a job. I was like. I've never had more than walk in a door, show them right. what I can do, and leave and <laughs> with the <laughs> job. It. What do you wear to the interview? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever you can work in. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, you know, show up. This is what I can do. Walk out the door with a job. That's what it was always for me. You know, skilled trade stuff. That's the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't have to go through all that. Like, got like six interviews and go all through this. And like, that, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, speaking of crazy, I have a crazy story, and I can't believe I haven't told you guys this uh, up yet until this point. But uh, last night, I'm in the garage grinding up. I just got done talking to yeah. you on the phone. I see. I was, like, literally now. in in heaven. I was out here grinding up venison, having a PBR, listening to Meteor Podcast. And I'm like, this is perfect. <laughs> like, I'm listening to Stephen Rinell on Meteor Podcast, grinding up venison. I stashed myself away approximately 40 pounds of venison in my other freezer. It was f like five one-gallon Ziploc bags of just cube, mm -hmm. cubed up meat yeah. and grind stuff. And then I went and got 10 pounds of pork, ground it all up, and I did 25 pounds of Italian venison sausage. Oh, and that's I awesome. Packaged it in pound and a half increments, vacuum sealed those up, and I just got done with those, and I was getting ready to do the remaining hamburger. I wanted to wash something off, so I walked in the house, and my son has croup. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. That's terrible, man. That I had sucks. to take my boy to the hospital for that. Before. So yeah, that Shannon stayed home with him yesterday, took him to the doctor, right? middle of the day they gave him a small steroid they said it's croup this that this that okay we read some stuff yesterday um hopefully everything stabilizes in a day or two right yep it mm -hmm. goes quick once i they walk get that in, steroid it's good yeah. to go well i walk inside and he's like 
coughing. It sounds real bad. So mm-hmm. Shannon runs in there and she like comes running out and he can't breathe. His face is blue and oh, he's Jesus. damn. He's uh it's he's like terrified. Yeah. yeah. You know, and he's freaking out and that like the anxiety and I think the fact that he's already having trouble breathing mm-hmm. and then just like the pa- the panic mode. Mm-hmm. He his throat basically like closed up and he started like cough, coughing up this fluid and he was he was like choking to death right in front of me, dude. It was pretty much the scariest thing that I've ever yeah. I- encountered. We're two and a half years into having a kid now, and we've never had anything like this happen. We've been very fortunate, and I instantly felt like so unprepared. I'm like, holy shit, yeah. what do we do? I kind of just from thinking back and being a little kid and having asthma and thinking about the anxiety and not being able to breathe and stuff, I, I, I was hoping that all I needed to do was get him to calm down and that he would be able to breathe, you know. But Shannon got on the phone with the emergency, and we were getting throwing stuff together about ready to peel out of the driveway, and he started calming down, and he spit up everything that he had to basically spit up. Mm-hmm. and we walked outside and like they say get him cold air well i'm like oh, this probably isn't gonna do shit but we walked out there he started to calm down and within probably like 90 seconds or whatever he he was able to like calm down enough to start breathing again and <laughs> that's freaky man really really uh freaked me out so the lady said on the emergency if he's has fluid coming up you need to get him to the emergency room so that's what we did at 10 o'clock at night last night, went to the emergency room, got there at 1030. They didn't see us till after midnight, yeah. sat in the emergency room for over 90 minutes with a two-year-old who's crying and having Jeez. problems breathing and shit. Mm-hmm. What I was hot, flaming hot. Couldn't even tell you. 19 mile and... Uh, oh, Henry that's a good Ford. one. Yeah, Henry Ford. It is a good hospital. We, we had him. For it. We had him there. And that's why we went there. I traveled farther to go there. Right. But maybe wrong night or yep. whatever. But, yeah, man, I was I was really irritated about the whole way that thing went with him. Once we got I there, bet. you know, he's worked up. It's now, like, they're trying to do stuff on him. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. He's a 2-year-old. Like, he's a physically exhausted, struggling to keep his eyes open. And it was just driving me crazy. They'd have one person come in and do something. It would take 30 seconds, and they'd be like, Th- they're they're going to do this next, whatever. And we'd sit there, and, like, 15 minutes later, another person would show up and, like, bring a pill or something. And right. we were there till like, 3 o'clock in the morning. That's how it went with Luke, too. We were uh, – it happened probably six months ago. So he was, like, a year and a half. He might have even been closer to a year old. And it was, like, 3 in the morning he woke up. And, you know, I have a 5-year-old daughter now. So when we had to go to the hospital, it was like I had to call mom and dad, our parents. It's like, hey, Luke is coughing. I got to get to the emergency room right now. Amy's staying home with Katie. Come to the house, you know, and then Amy got in the car and met us at the hospital. It was just like, and then you're there with the hospital. You know, you go to the ER at 2 in the morning. Nothing good is going on in no. the ER no. at 2 in the morning, <laughs> you know. no. I you're just that. trying to shield your kids' eyes while you're <laughs> yeah, trying exactly. to get them help, know. you know. So. That was the first time I had to deal with anything like that, and I was just kind of aggravated at, like, the way the whole thing went. I just thought for the money that we pay for health care and shit in this country that, you know, you'd have a little more, little more recognition that there's a, <laughs> a young child struggling to breathe in your waiting room, and it takes you 90 damn minutes to get them in and right. figure out and assess what's going on, yep. you know. Having kids, man, that that, uh, Fuck. Uh, that <laughs> makes you so aware I, of I, sickness and all I'm that. I'm pretty other sure shit. this patch of gray over here <laughs> oh, is from God. that experience. <laughs> My uh, daughter Kaylee had croup and RSV at the same time. What's like RSV? She, it's a respiratory, respiratory infection. Okay. It so both of them are bad, but together is real bad. She was in the hospital for three days. Terrible. God sucks. Yeah, my. My daughter had croup, and then <laughs> the only time we went to the hospital was <laughs> she got a raisin stuck in her nose. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Yeah. She had a tendency to do that when she was little. 
<laughs> she'll love that I uh, mentioned that yeah. on a podcast. She'll, You're right. She'll want to punch me in the face <laughs> considering she's 14 now. <laughs> oh, really? There are all these uh, <laughs> horror stories, too. I'd like to formally congratulate Mark Kenyon on having a kid on the way, too. So yeah. now he gets to hear all that. I know. I yeah. look forward to the emergency room at 2 in the morning for mm-hmm. raisins and croup. It'll, <laughs> it'll happen. <laughs> Misery love company. I was at that hospital. I was going to say, the reason I said that was a good hospital is because Wyatt – it got stitches there uh not last summer summer before on his sixth birthday i just bought a new boat sea ray weekender and i had a little step stool take two steps up the step stool well and then then you step on the swim ladder right swim ladder stainless steel tubing like this Mm -hmm. and it folds down and seats into a two little yeah, clam, two little clam oh, right oh, prongs God. so he's standing on the dude it's his sixth birthday he's turning six that day I bring the new boat home we're going on the boat as soon as i get it ready right he's on the step ladder folding the damn ladder up and down folding the swim ladder up and down obviously puts his fingers underneath oh. the step and sets it down into the seat and then steps off the, oh. the step ladder onto the goddamn onto Ouch. the uh swim that ladder hurts. Dude, he just starts screaming. He don't even know what he's doing. So I look, I'm inside the boat. I look back. There's his, there's his <laughs> fingers wedged in there, spraying blood. He's screaming. Talk about a terrible scene on his sixth birthday. Oh God! Dude, almost his finger, lost two digits on his sixth birthday. <laughs> it looked like it How looked like he you? took an axe and and hit his finger right in the middle, split it right oh, in half, broke horrible. the bone and everything. Oh God! Oh, oh dude. I had to sit. I had to sit there and hold him in there and that hospital for Dude, hours while they stitched him that's up. And the, all the shit. That is the worst oh, feeling. God. My daughter oh, broke it's her such arm. Such a helpless feeling. My daughter broke her arm, and it was literally she was riding a bike. It was, she was just learning how to ride it, and she went. She was at my in-laws, and she went down this hill, and then they have like their their uh, yard sort of slopes down, and then it goes into like a ravine essentially that's in the woods and she went off the end of that and she's like down there screaming i run down there and her arm was like pointing the wrong way oh (laughs) jeez it's like the worst just like like the uh, i you know you know how to yeah yeah you're just like in your blood your blood just starts pounding. yeah exactly yeah and like yeah, like I'm carrying her, and it's like so bad. Yeah, every bone in your body That's just wants terrible. to destroy whatever yeah, caused exactly. the problem. Yeah, exactly. like there's nothing yeah. you can do. Yeah, yeah so. I would say for any young parent, so that was eye opener for me that it's like better be critical that you have a plan because seconds count and things go south. Yep, dude, I was in La La Land, like officially checked in, out yep. here doing right. my thing. Having a beer, starting to relax, and then it's like, my kid's dying. <laughs> yeah. That sucks, man. And yeah, I felt super rough. ill-prepared. But now the thought process is in my head. It was just a good recognition. is like, dude, you better be on point. Something happens to one of your kids. Like, yep. you bet you want to have a, a plan of attack. Like, not what hospital are we going. Like, you should probably know what hospital you're going right. to <laughs> where you're at, even if you're on vacation. Oh, yeah. Oh, we right? always oh, yeah. look at that shit. Like, we know yep. when we're at the cabin. Why didn't you tell closest. me you were doing that, man? I could have. <laughs> <laughs> After you go through a couple of those instances you learn, like you did, you just, yeah, you'll yeah. be on it. Yeah, yep. exactly. I got like a 14-year-old. You guys got it. I'm right. like, I know, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You're kids I'm... with them little kids. It's hilarious. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I've been there, done that, right? <laughs> exactly. I've done through all that, and my kid's like 14. She's like self Contained. Now, when she breaks her arm, she just sets it herself, and you're on. She your would, way. man. Yeah. She'd be like, hey, rrr, rrr. "The kid's a bad." Yeah, after two and a half <laughs> years of having a kid and not having something happen, I was just like naive to it, you know. Yep. And then all of a sudden, it's like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Yeah. So of course, you know, I got no, no. Plus, when we came home, you know, he was up a couple times. Shannon's on a couple hours of sleep. I'm on a couple hours of sleep. We were up all night at the hospital. And then, of course, I had a huge, big meeting this morning that there was no way that I was making it to. And so I, I had to stay home with him, obviously, today. Shannon was home yeah. yesterday. So stayed home with him all day. Well, you know who to call. <laughs> my right. wife tends to be home. You're yeah. In the trades, here, man. take my kid that's 
dying of a disease and bring him yeah. into your house. Fix this kid. <laughs> bring him back. Anytime. You're in the trades. It's like sleep is like optional. Yeah. <laughs> I like the time. I it's like right. it goes in like giant spurts. You're going to get lots of sleep you for a certain get amount the, of time. The tradesman like, starter kit of yeah. um, Red Bull and <laughs> ibuprofen. Yeah, exactly. So you go. A gallon of coffee. Yeah. yeah, exactly. My coffee intake has increased heavily oh, this mine last too. year. Not cool. I took a day off last week to hang with my kid before we went up north, and I drank a lot of coffee in the morning at work. I leave the house at 5 a.m., you know, but shit, when I'm at home, I enjoy it so much more. I'm like, oh, yeah, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. (laughs) (laughs) This sounds crazy real quick, but I always drink out of a Yeti cup. Yeah. You know, coffee cup with a badass sealed thing, you know, sip coffee out of there. When I'm at home, I drink out of just a regular-ass mug. Dude, what a huge difference. You drink way more coffee. Yeah, it's I've unregulated. Open. Yeah. Just, <laughs> so, well, it's still hot, but it's just so damn good. Maybe right. it's the Emmett's. I don't know. It's but. like drinking beer out of a bottle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Beer out of a bottle and out of a pint glass. You know, Maybe out of a glass, you suck it down so fast because yeah, exactly. you don't have the bottleneck regulator built into it. <laughs> right. So. Exactly. Well, it's yeah. still so hot. You can only drink so much. I don't know. It's just more enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys want to talk briefly about deer hunting? Yeah, yeah sure. Why not? To do. <laughs> we can talk about I kids hurting we, themselves, <laughs> broken fingers, axe murderer <laughs> finger things going right, on. Yeah. Croup. Yeah. Wonder if talking about sick kids will get us ready. <laughs> <laughs> Good for it. Um, on a side note, yeah, man. I've anybody that uh, that listens to this that has uh, young kids that are real sick, man, my heart goes out to you because yeah, that's no fucking doubt. brutal. Yeah. Fucking tough to see little kids that are, you know, real, real ill. I, I, I couldn't even fathom, imagine dealing with that. Yeah, you know? there's people that go through it every day, like yep. the flare up that you have or we all have. Right. Yeah, that's every day. Yep, definitely. Okay. And then all those people thinking about it just re up their birth controls for at least three more months. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All the people with no yeah. children are right. like, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's the best form of misery ever endured it yep. is deer hunting deer hunting let's do it it's almost hunting. time we're turning the corner you season is only like two what's weeks today away. today sixth sixth yeah. september sixth, sixth. Yep. yep so Nine, not even six. a month you season That's is crazy. 10 days away you season and yep. small game and is antlerless is an antlerless yeah it's there's an antler list. early yeah. antler list early yep. antler list and is the independence hunt oh yeah and listen to this explain to the the him the county Do we have thing. to yeah <laughs> i don't want anybody to know that was a great secret. <laughs> <laughs> no tell there's an early antler list no, or just for youth so no he's got the skinny on something completely so different. the dnr changed something this year um, well, they added a thing. So Oakland, Macomb, and Wayne counties have extended archery season until January 31st. Really? Yeah. Wow. So <laughs> I'm excited. We got. Uh, that I've got some. Me out, but I got some I'm in St. Clair County. Yeah. yeah. I have. Well, public land in all three of them. Yeah. I'm sitting here <laughs> thinking, we're in Macomb to... County right now, right? We're in yeah. Macomb County right now, brother. County Line Road and uh, Satchel of Apples, right there. I have uh, <laughs> I have uh, access to a uh, 15 acre parcel that's super legit. Awesome. That um is doesn't get it's surrounding by hunting pressure. Yeah, but, but it has it very heavy pressure. cover. Yeah, and I posted the daylights out of it last year, and uh, it could have the potential to hold some deer that that late season. Yeah, it's it's just it's, 10 minutes from here. That's awesome. That's it's surprising how much just like a little bit of cover in very small parcels, especially in like metro areas like this, will yeah. hold deer. Yeah, it, it's crazy. I City talked to deer. the landowner today, and he gave uh, myself has permission to it, and I can do. He said, "Go in the care, do whatever you want." He said, "There's one other guy that's gonna muzzle loader hunt it. That's yeah. a, he only muzzle loader hunts." So that's awesome. I yeah. got that 15 acres for the season. You can. And it's in Macomb Town. Yeah. Macomb County. Some January does. You posted yeah, that after awesome. I had already applied for my antler list tag yeah. up north. I was like, ah, oh, that would be great to see. For so the so antler list tags are Regarding outright. the antler list tag thing, I actually, because if you read the antler list um, book, there's not real great. Um, they don't go into it real in depth. Um, 
You can buy as ma- I called the DNR today. Actually, you can buy as many public land dough permits as you want until quotas are filled. Right. That's what I assumed there after is you no get limit. your. So right. there's no bag limit. Insane. There's no. Well, bag. unless they. Unless they run out of dough Tag. permits. Right. Yep. Yeah. You can Which buy I, as many as you I want. I checked. There was open tags for almost everything. Yeah. But it that was yesterday that you could start buying leftovers. Yeah. There's I'm buying mine yesterday. and my daughters this weekend so, so everybody's buying today. up the dough tags so, right now wow go get but your yeah, dough I tags b- I better go get some. for up north down here it won't be a problem but, but yeah, oh so. i had to put on for a dough permit for up there oh 69 yeah, yeah but the, i looked I still didn't check there's uh, well that's for public land though i did the same thing you said you're saying private land right no, it's all public public li- private land you're limited to five dough permits throughout the state on private land Public land is unlimited as long as there's quota. Jeez. Yeah, I called the DNR today to just check because in the <laughs> book it says see page such and such to see limit. Yeah. You go to the page and all it says is there's a limit for private land. I called the DNR today and the guy's like, I think he went to that page. He's like, hold on. Can you hold for a minute? And he comes back <laughs> and he says, you can buy as many as you want <laughs> until the quota is filled. So I'm going to Lumberjack tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. I am too. I, I need to. There's a couple of areas that I want to get doe tags. I'm on a doe hunting mission this yeah, year. I, Dude, yeah. I love whacking does. Check this thing out that I put together. I, I want to play with this, by the way. The, oh, you uh, know you're shooting at uh, Pigeon River State Forest Doe awesome, Hunter. <laughs> Dude, oh, I shit. love the yeah. – is that a quickie quiver? It is a quickie yes. quiver. <laughs> and the whisker biscuit. And a whisker biscuit. A, oh. The, Dude, you need like a bow doodle on that thing or something. Oh, uh, I'm <laughs> getting tracking string. Cool. Tracking <laughs> string. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I have a site that uh, should be here. Hopefully tomorrow. It's awesome. A Does cobra. it have the old school brass and, uh, and pins? And I need a co- I need a cobra stabilizer. Yeah. Do you need a, just like the old school thing? I have a really old like from Oops. that time. You can lay it right on the bar. Do you want a uh, like pin sight that would be like as old as that bow? Pa- potentially. Yeah, it's like old school brass pins. Yeah. Like just the brass pins. They're unpainted or I'm anything. I'm going to try to go with carbon or uh, not carbon, fiber, fiber optic. optic. Fiber yeah. optic pins. I'm going to try to find like a Cobra. He, oh, yeah. he sent me a I link have for an it. old one too. There you go. You're my guy. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> That's what I've been waiting for. Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to buy one. I knew there's somebody had I got an old ass got browning that looks just like that yep. with some old fiber optics Dude. on there, man. We'll You've seen it, it before. I'm sure I have. I didn't know barn. Whisker Biscuits. But how old are Whisker Biscuits? They're oh. got to be late 90s. I mean, it's probably yeah, a probably little late modern 90s. than that. How old is that bow? 91. So those are 91. the fair weather arrows. 71, really? 90. Yeah, you can't, oh, use those in the sun. you can't use those in the rain. No, not really. That's my fair weather arrows, and then that dozen of uh, aluminums over aluminums? there is my. You're not. Not Good fair ones. is my bad weather arrows because yeah, <laughs> really not going <laughs> to shoot weather, not going to shoot feathers. Got in special the rain. arrows nice for arrows. different weather. And I plan on doing arrows. some serious deer hunting with this bow in the rain. So I'm taking that thing into the Pigeon River Forest. <laughs> some guys can see you can walking get that down powder the trail. for feathers. Yeah, like you can. A waterproofing but powder. It's not as good as having. It's still not no. as good as veins. Well, especially if it's cold too, and then Plus, it freezes. You're like. That <laughs> like, screwed. That just half throw these out. <laughs> like, maybe I can like run up on the You're deer and stab You're better off just it. ripping them <laughs> off and bear shaft shooting yeah, exactly. them. Don't ask me what bug got up my ass to do that, but I bought that bow for $20 at a flea market Dude, in that's Mayo. a fun bow. That's it awesome. It did not look like that. Is that one of the Florida ones, or was that one made in Michigan? That one's made in Grayling. Awesome. Really? Wow. Absolutely. No, not 91? in 91. What do you mean? I thought it when was he sell those? mid-90s that bear moved to Florida, right? I, I they, don't know the date. It was a... Uh, it should have actually like a triangle that says Grayling. It's got to be Florida. It's got to be Gainesville. God damn it. You guys just ruined my whole night. No. That shouldn't ruin your night. It's well, still cool. It, as soon as... like It was right when uh, bear... You could buy like bear archery products in Kmart and stuff. Yeah, was exactly. when they moved to Gainesville. Yeah, because oh, he really? sold yeah. it, and they moved to Gainesville. Yeah, all the gra- all the bears that were in Grayling, they have that like uh, 
broad head shape with grayling on them. So I, I was just thinking I have this nostalgic northern Michigan bow that I harvested from a flea that market. Oh, you you still guys run with told it, me this thing's made in Florida. You can buy it at Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no. I get the emblem and run with it. You could you buy it in point. Kmart in 1991. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I can't see. Because I know that Kodiak Magnum I bought was uh, actual grayling made. Right. Bear bow. But I thought it was like late 70s that they went to Gainesville. No, it wasn't that late. Let's so see here. When did they move? I'll, I'll even Google. I am not a good historian by any stretch of the imagination, but I thought it was long before 91. It may have been. How is your food plot coming? Dude, um, tell, tell Drew about your – wait, did you find it? No. It's still looking. So, I don't know last time I told you about it. So, did I tell you anything about no, it? No, he knows You're nothing. You could just about unloading the equipment earlier today. Oh, yeah. Tell I, him uh, the whole thing what that what you just went through. Well, I I tell you I got to tell you the whole story late but 70s. quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so, right behind my sunroom all the way to the back of my property, I brought it was Tag Elders. It's like an eighth of a mile long. It was all, like, the first part of it, half of it was tag elders. The brush hogged it all down. The rear part was just field. That I used to run my mud truck up and down a bunch and shit. It's all nasty, rutted out. Uh, brush hogged it all down. I've been doing that for, like, three years. Then this year I borrowed a rototiller from a guy, put it on the tractor. Rototill it, like, six times. I put pulled the flap up with bungee cords and ran it in reverse, dude. Kubota just screaming, <laughs> <laughs> throwing dirt around, dude. It was awesome. So worked it up real good, and then my buddy lent me a spreader for my four-wheeler, a call to packer, and he gave me a whole shitload of seed, enough to do, like, the whole area. Well, this is my first go-around, dude. I'm not a farmer. I don't <laughs> do aim about food plots. So he gives me, like, uh, this whole bag of uh, wheat. It's like – you know, 10 pounds or 15 pounds. And he says, oh, yeah, spread that around your whole area. Well, I spread that around just the front half. Like the front half was smoother, more black dirt. There's a couple trees that divide the front half from the back half. The back half's more open field. The front half's more covered. The front half's a little bit smaller. So I spread all this seed just in the front half. And then I walk it, and I'm like, dude, there's barely any seed. Like there's <laughs> seed here, seed here. I'm like, that he gave me, that was the the wheat. Then he gave me uh, like uh, 10 pounds of alfalfa. And then he told me to go get uh, enough clover to do like a quarter acre. Long story short, dude, <laughs> I put all that seed just on the front half. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I can barely see any seed. So I just kept putting the shit down. And I called a pack the hell out of it, you know. And then Kevin gave me... Uh, Gave me a, a half a bag of whatever the hell that was. I don't even know. Brassicas and some other shit. Yeah, it was pure attraction, I believe, from Whitetail Institute. And it was enough to do a quarter acre. <laughs> yeah, so I planted them like three days apart. The The front half was worked up better. It was smoother. And uh, it was just a better piece of land or whatever. And that is taken off really good. The last, The back section had more thick like hay. Uh, type of grass that was worked under, you know what I mean? Some of the seed was probably laying on top of, like, dead grass and shit. Right. But so the rear half actually is not doing anything yet, but uh, the front half that I, I probably put five acres worth of seed on <laughs> is coming up. <laughs> Can't see it. I'm going to put more down. My buddy, this is how amateur I am. Are you going to go get glasses soon since you couldn't see the seed you were throwing down? Can you go get an eye exam? Or? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I got excited with some fertilizer last night. The theory oh is not over. <laughs> I was so excited about this fertilizer. My buddy's like, oh, you're supposed to work it in the ground before the seed and all this. I'm like, well, it's too late for that. He says, well, wait till it rains. And I'm looking at the forecast last night. I'm a busy guy anyhow. I'm like, when it starts raining and it's going to call for rain, I'm going to fertilize. I think you had you had talked to me when you were doing your butchering last night or whatever. You're, yeah. You're grinding. Yep. So it starts raining, and I'm like, I'm going to fertilize. <laughs> I, put, I put 50 pounds in the spreader, 
And I'm trotting through the food plot with this goddamn thing. Kids are chasing me and shit. I'm yelling at them, stay out of the fertilizer. <laughs> I'm running, <laughs> running through the, the thing, spreading the shit. And then what happens as soon as I get done, it stops raining. No more rain. That's been sunny ever since. My buddy, who's like this farmer guy, told me, dude, don't put that down unless it's positively going to rain or it's going to burn all your shit up. While I ran around in the rain spreading it, then it got sunny. It's been sunny ever since. So, so I don't know how what's going to happen. How much fertilizer? <laughs> you didn't put 50 pounds of fertilizer down. I put 50 in the <laughs> front section. You might as well just throw a match on your front <laughs> Hey, we're going to find out. I think she's coming along. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Dude, it's good shit. I, 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 I don't have a picture of it. Planted a couple food plots on my buddy's place up in the thumb, but that was like... That was like the one year we'd use the rototiller, like a like push rototiller. The other years we used rakes, like hardcore shit. Anymore, if I plant a food plot it, on private land, it's just rye. Right, it's, yeah. This shit will grow in anything. Right, yeah, ryegrass, <laughs> you rake it in. Yeah, you, know, exactly. you rake up the leaves, throw it down. I'll just plant some field yeah. rye, and it's like you can't go wrong. Especially yeah. uh, in the fall, oats or rye. You yeah, can't go wrong yeah. with can't that. Go wrong. Stuff and grows you everywhere. Can't they kill love it. it. You, can't, you can't make it not grow. Right. Right. Yeah. That's what we plant up in uh, at the cabin up in Mayo there. Oh, yeah. That, that's a great spot for it, Because it's super sandy. Too. Super too. sandy soil. You don't have to do anything yeah, to it. Yeah. It's like, oh, get a soil toast, blah, blah, blah. Mm. It's like, no, I'll just throw down rye. It'll grow, grow anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> I could grow rye on Mars if I wanted yeah, exactly. to, probably. I, I, I've seen that stuff sprout in the but back if you were of trying, trucks. <laughs> if you were trying to right. have the ultimate rye plot, though, I mean, you'd yeah, put, I, put lime and get your pH right and all that. Right. If yeah. I could have afford the time to spread yeah, exactly. a right, truck right. of lime down. It's all about yeah, time. Exactly. And money. That's you why know, I'm thinking shit adds up, clothes. right? I grew up in northern Shit Michigan. adds up, too, yeah, right? Yes, it does. Sandbox. You borrowed the equipment. <laughs> yeah, I borrowed the, yeah, I borrowed the equipment, and I probably still got a couple hundred bucks into it. You right. Know? I'm. That's why I'm starting to think that Culver's the way to go. Clover's, that cl- that Clover's, Clover's well. coming Road. back every Clover's year. Good. It's I nice got a brush hog. Spring. It's nothing to hook to the brush I hog. I like in. always having and maintaining a clover plot, but then having some annual plots of yeah. fall cool cool stuff, too. I don't like the idea of having to, bro- or to rototill every year and replant it. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Plant clover. Maybe one day I'll get into it, but plant a nice clover plot. Like. I would need to go buy a rototiller if I'm going to get that serious. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. Right. Rye and uh, clover. It's like... Rye will grow anywhere, and if you can, like, you, does it no, come back every year? No, no, but you it doesn't it. matter. It's like it's a very minimal effort to yeah, replant, really. though, and it's it only was, like, I mean, you could go to a mill, and I can't even yeah, imagine what an elevator cheap. charges you for it's rye nothing. seed. It's it's, nothing. I can't remember what I bought. I I think last time I bought rye for like fifty bucks, fifty pounds was like. 11 bucks or yeah. something it is that as effective uh, as clover deer love like you plant that stuff around labor day you'll have deer it'll all, be green into it'll december be green no into shit. December. Wow. yeah especially you go up north where there's like nothing else is green yeah it's like deer love that stuff yeah rye is like the poor man's ultimate food plot yeah exactly it'll I mean, grow you can anything. go like if you want to go to cabela's and buy you know the rake in food blah yeah. blah blah just go to your go on Google, look up your local elevator. Yep. Every town's got one within an hour exactly. of it. Mm-hmm. And you can get this stuff for dirt cheap rye and just you just literally throw it down and go over it with a no leaf rake and you'll yeah, have exactly. a Exactly. It'll grow in anything. Like you go up into like even the sandbox up north. It'll grow in that stuff. Yeah. I've well, seen this stuff grow in people's the back of your truck. Some of the lot of granaries too. I know the ones around here, um, because they're in an area where there's sportsmen. They'll have a, they have a whole they'll have section. a habitat mix. Yeah. yeah, they'll have a food plot mix. Yeah, and if you go in there, so and say, always check with your local granary. If, if you're you go into the local plot. place and say, "Hey, I want to put a food plot," they're going to tell you exactly what yeah. you should put. Those I want guys to sell it to grain. everybody, and they'll tell you. And they live, you know, little, throw yeah. down triple sixteen or blah blah blah. You yeah, can get super complicated if you want to be a chemist about your food plot. Have yeah. at it. Right. But there are easier ways and, and like, cheaper ways. And a lot to of people it. buy this like food plot stuff that comes in like the white tail this or whatever. Yeah. Or, like go to your local grain place. They have all the. It's the best seed. Right. And right. It has super small percentage of. Yeah weeds and all that stuff you like all the percentages that are marked right on there super tight and like you can talk to the folks there and they will like 
you could probably get them to make you up a bag of whatever the hell you want. Right. Right. And yeah. that bag of seeds sitting in your local yeah, metropolitan exactly. sporting goods store has probably been there yeah. for four years and yeah, it won't exactly. even germinate. Yeah, you know? exactly. No, so. and you can get all the stuff like for clover, you need to, what is it? Uh, what's the stuff you can put on it to make it germinate? better i'm trying to remember uh, can't remember what it is all, all the stuff for all that stuff is at your local granary it's definitely the place to you go. know what else is at local granary shelled corn <laughs> that stuff yeah. looks pretty That's good pretty damn good <laughs> shit yeah that yep. is a very affordable option if you're hunting for <laughs> does and year and a half old bucks <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> out of your uh hunting shack it'll be great yeah so. you won't kill a bunch <laughs> of monsters but right. You won't kill any monsters. <laughs> you won't kill no monsters. <laughs> <laughs> Unless for some reason somebody's been shooting at that one across the quarter right. mile. If you get lucky and he's <laughs> running and you just happen to catch him. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You shot a nice buck last year. Yeah. Uh, ten point. Well, he's probably a legal nine because he was all broke up, but it was definitely a ten. Yeah. It so was a pretty nice deer. Our deer camps are what? All right, 10, 15 miles apart. Northern Probably, Michigan, yeah. Northern Michigan deer camps, both Probably situated. Twenty miles, I guess. We're both situated right in the Pigeon River State Forest, and we're how far apart? Twenty, 20. miles. I don't know. I, I think it's like forty minutes back road. Yeah, I guess. it's probably Half like hour. fifteen miles is the. But that's yeah. Pretty, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> pretty crazy that we're surrounded by <laughs> the there, same piece of public up there, land. Yeah, forty mi- minutes could be. Anywhere from like ten miles to well, twenty five miles. Right. They're slow traveled roads. Yeah. They're windy. Yeah. They're essentially slow roads. glorified two tracks at some parts. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So they do take a little while to travel. However, I feel like our group of deer hunters travels them probably I've at a higher rate of speed yeah, oh yeah. than <laughs> most people. Oh, I was up there uh, trout fishing with a buddy of mine who lives up there. Holy hell. <laughs> like, I grew up up north. I drive down dirt roads pretty fast. It made me feel like I definitely haven't lived up north for a long time because I drive way too slow on dirt roads. <laughs> it's like driving by and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I know we've had some epic two tracks. <laughs> yeah, oh, we God. I know. Back in the day when we were younger. Yeah. Shit, yeah. That got crazy. Yeah, I know I've Should killed be many a ball joint. It may have been illegal. illegal. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> seen a lot of pickup trucks come to the demise of some northern Michigan weekends. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to get Battle Cruiser back here soon, I guess. Yeah. I so was just telling Drew that uh, I had to pick out a different form or whatever. Oh, yeah, you're having a shoulder mount done? Yeah. That's sweet. So you just told people... A lot of people name deer before they shoot them, but you named this deer after you shot them. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, yeah, definitely. I had never, I'm not as, you know, I don't uh, do cameras and bait piles and shit. I've just been hunting the same, basically two square miles since I was, I mean, shit, man. I've been out yeah, there all since public. I was eight years old. Big. All public, yeah. Yeah. I know every ridge in the area, you know, so. So opening morning. We were talking about shooting does earlier. I've never shot a doe off that property. I was able to get a buck every, almost every year. I went on like a two-year dry spell or whatever. But this year, I had a, well, this is last year, that I had a doe permit. So I'm like, and I was coming off a dry spell. <laughs> not from, not, well, last year I shot .9, two years ago. I'm coming off two-year fucking dry spell previous to that. So I'm like, Got a doe permit, now I'm killing. If it's brown, it's down. You know, if it's a fair size, you know, doe, whatever. So opening morning, here into my meadow, here comes a doe walking right at me. In the end of the meadow, I can see like 170 yards. So I'm like, hell yeah. Safety <laughs> off. I'm going to shoot this thing in the head. There's <laughs> not going to be any discussion about <laughs> broken fragments in the cage. I'm going to let it come all the way at me, though. So I'm. It's coming, coming, coming. It gets like 30 yards from me. It just stops, turns around. I'm like, no shit. I'm talking literally, that's what it did. It walked from 180 yards out in a straight line, turn around 30 yards and walk straight away. Now I got the crosshairs on the back of its head. I'm thinking, this is even better. <laughs> and I'm just waiting. It's, it's just walking away. I got all the time in the world. A buck's going to come running out. I know it, you know. 
this thing gets out about like 100 yards and it was like you flip the switch dude gone that thing went from just walking and setting its feet down nice and ginger to pew, gone i'm like holy shit i was just gonna blast that thing in the head and let it sit there for a while and bring a bucket you know and i'm telling you like 20 minutes later uh here comes battle cruiser from the area that i never i never see deer come from this area he just comes from behind me i hear something and i'm i'm up in a ladder stand like a 16 foot ladder stand kind of in the corner of some pines open meadow to the front and then there's like a and it, the meadow narrows into like a trail to my right and i walk in and out across that trail that son of a bitch comes around the the pine tree and stops right on the trail where i walk in he was 12 yards away <laughs> i see him right when i see him as a legal buck i got these mittens they got like a cover on them like this right yeah, yeah they so break you gotta pull over your fingers your out those things yeah so i pull my fingers out i'm reaching down from from my gun and the so the is your flap, gun, you're you're in tree stand yeah on a ladder stand yeah it's laying across me right and okay. he's coming to my right so I'm like I'm gonna have to do some crazy twist and get this fucker <laughs> so I got my fingers out of there and it's got a ma- it's got a those flaps have yeah. magnets all right right I've, so I've only used back. the ones that use Velcro no these ones have magnets all right. which is sweet so you don't get the ripping sound yeah but what happens is if it you clicks. let them come back they click. <laughs> so they these things are facing straight up and i'm trying to get myself negotiated he stops 12 yards from me and turns and stares right at me and i'm telling you legitly he was staring at me for probably three minutes which feels like an hour and a half <laughs> and the whole time my those flappers are straight up and down <laughs> so i can't move i am like a statue i'm just staring at him and he's He's not that grave a buck. I mean, he's. I think he's a badass buck. But when you compare him to, you know, real tall ones, he. But he, what he was, you know, his main characteristic was wide. Yeah. He just come way out, and I could actually only see one side of his right. I mean, I could see they had the other side, but I could really only see one. I'm like, this thing's a shooter. My heart's just <laughs> pounding. <laughs> Those things are like swaying back and forth. <laughs> I'm one click away from this bastard being gone. <laughs> After two and a half minutes, he must not have liked something, and he just started scurrying up the ridge. And I was, you know, I folded him back, and I was able to swivel, you know, swivel around, and he got about 24 yards away, and I dusted him. <laughs> and then when I got to look, you know, I got to look at him, I'm like, Jesus Christ, it just hit me. I'm like, what? I'm sitting here talking, I'm texting the guys, badass deer fighter. I'm like, this is a fucking battle cruiser is what this thing is. <laughs> he was infested with ticks worse than I've ever seen. Dude, the sitting there holding his lately. horns. Ticks are just crawling <laughs> up my arm and shit. I'm like, Jesus Christ. This thing really is a battle cruiser. <laughs> yeah, he was a what? Big he was bastard. a 10 point And what? How many tines were broken off? Oh, he was, I don't know. Let me, let's go back in the archives here. Get you a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, I'll post. There's an image on the Deer Hunter podcast Instagram of Battle Cruiser. If you scroll, really? if you scroll back through the feed from hunting season last year, there is a uh, picture, a nice picture of you with Battle Cruiser. I can't believe this is the first time I've been over here and been involved. I like in the, the show naming deer after you shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. that. I like that. The whole like. Oh, you got I'm going to name my uh, deer slash cows for the whole year. Is right. That'll probably anger people that I said that. <laughs> I don't do it. A guy yesterday, I was telling him I'm targeting this 140, and he said, what did you name it? And I said, dinner. <laughs> <laughs> There's Battle Cruiser in the back of my truck. That's a nice buck, man. Yeah, he's not bad. Yeah, it's um, a nice northern Michigan public land buck. Oh, hell yeah. That's There's kind of a better look at his horn. I mean, his tines weren't real tall or nothing. And no, that's he was a nice kind of buck broke from up. Michigan. Like, yeah, how many times were broke off on that thing? Looks uh, like a few. You're like, he's a fighter. <laughs> Battle cruiser. Battle cruiser. His brow time's <laughs> gone there. Yeah. Excuse me. And he's then, got uh, at least two broke off. Possibly three. And the end of the beams broke off here, too. So. <laughs> Jeez. He was a he's bad a scrapper. Bitch, man. He's like, I, I a shot. body on him. He was big. 
Yeah, that's a big deer. It's I shot nice one deer. year. I shot it. He's a five, but that's just because he like broke off everything north of the uh, his uh, brow tine on the one side, and that everything else on the other side was only like an inch tall because he snapped everything off. Really? <laughs> it's like, it like he was an angry young man. <laughs> <laughs> man, those northern Michigan bucks look awesome with those with those dark horns. I've shot, you know, I don't know, fifteen. That, bucks they look a lot from like that the, area, the, and I've never seen one look exactly like this. You know, sure. You know, that's the thing. It's like shooting a deer like that in Michigan. That's like uh, you go to another state. Guys are like, oh, I shot measured yeah, this five and, of those. It's like, it's like <laughs> there's something. Yeah, they're to be arguing s- over net and gross scores. Yeah, I'm it's like, like what? No, dude, that's not it, even just to get anything in Michigan that's like that yeah. size is right. like that's something to be proud of. Like, right. yeah, I was proud. Of. I have I've had two good years, so that's point nine that I shot that's the year a, before. That's a nice deer. That's a nice sure. deer in Michigan, man. That was a legit one right there. Yeah, that was. But they look totally he doesn't look anything like Battle Cruiser. Yeah. <laughs> For six months after he shot Battle Cruiser. That's per, nice. Almost every time I text him, What are you doing? The response would be, I'm eating Battle Cruiser chili. <laughs> <laughs> what are you yes. doing? Battle Cruiser chili, dude. <laughs> Battle I made like chili. eight pounds of that shit. Yeah, I just went out in the barn and Kept the wood stove going. Beer and battle cruiser chili, dude. It's all you need to survive <laughs> in the winter. I love that. That's awesome. Oh, food. That's the most important part. Yeah. Oh, man. Venison chili. Are you kidding oh, God. me? Oh, God. Dude, I, uh, what? I make venison chili, and then I dehydrate it so I can take it on uh, like backpacking trips. Man, what a great idea. Really? Yeah. You gotta get the Mikoff recipe. Yeah, for I make venison chili, chili that I dehydrate it and, and put it in little zip uh, freezer bag, like the uh, vacuum freezer bags, and then I pour it in my. Uh, and then you just put water in and warm it up. Or whatever. Yeah, I put it in my jet boil container, or I have just a, you know, it's not a jet boil, but it's a camp stove right, right. with a little pan yeah. on top, and I just pour my uh, un-jet, dehydrated chili. Un- unjet boil. Yeah, my. Un-jet I have the same boil. one. <laughs> yeah. My unjet boil takes about forty times longer than a jet boil. Yeah, no, mine heats up. You real probably fast. have a quite different model than I have. <laughs> <laughs> no, mine, uh, mine's. I can't remember who makes mine, but uh, there's a couple of them on like Amazon. And dude, stuff they cost now, like probably. eleven bucks yeah, or something like that. They're cheap. amazing, like yeah. for what they are. Like they have surprisingly good uh, ratings. Yeah, no, you just that's got not the, the same one I have. There's my white tail. Field camp stove oh. assembly, little mess container stove, and then just that's a awesome propane or a map gas tank goes on there. I got two of them in. You can here. look at my Instagram and see my uh, not jet boil yeah. on multiple occasions. <laughs> I'm only coffee. going a mile at most, yeah. so I splurged and bought myself the jet boil just because yeah. they have that uh, French press you can do yeah. the coffee grounds and press it. Oh man, dude, what is that? Uh, when you're out ice fishing and it's like 10 degrees outside and you can heat up a fresh thing of coffee, you I, can't beat yeah, it. I'm awesome. lazy. Yeah, I used those Starbucks Via packs. Yeah, but those weren't around when I bought suck. it. <laughs> you know? They are still instant coffee. They right. still suck. Right. <laughs> those are good now, though. But they're better than like any other instant, co- instant right. coffee. Our buddy, they uh, still suck. Our buddy Nick, when we went camping, he d- bomberito. Yeah, he brings whole bean coffee and a hand grinder. Really, awesome. hand grinds hard coffee part. in the yeah. tent in the Can't morning. Blame That's him, awesome. Man. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, I it smells amazing when he's making. I it. Like, oh man! Just to finish, just to finish that up, what did you do after Battle Cruiser was laid on the ground and you walked up to him and what went on for the rest of the evening? Because, well, dude, my dad hasn't drank in like twenty years. So we actually got drunk the night before, which was a rarity. So I was hurting extremely bad during this whole experience. <laughs> <laughs> so just gutting him and getting him to the truck was a chore, man. Was this a morning hunt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This was opening morning, dude. What time? Like quarter to eight. Okay. Right. So, so that was right out of the gate, dude. Nice. It was a nice good. Still, that's why I needed. It was still morning, wasn't it? It was, yeah, it was warmer, kind of foggy. Yep, I remember. Yeah, it was pretty still, but, yep. but yeah, it was. Uh, it was a good deer morning. It was. It wasn't bad. They were moving. You know, there's, you know, shit, there's shots being fired all over the place. 
And I still, I told the story about I was going to shoot the doe in the damn head. And then five minutes <laughs> later, I see <laughs> Battle Cruiser. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if maybe he, uh, maybe that doe winded me. The wind come from the back, maybe. And that, that buck must have been coming in from the side, maybe sended me and went around. Oh. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe she spooked him. Maybe am I, I don't know. Because deer never come from there. And he came right out and looked right at me, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> So, but it was it was a pretty good experience. So you got him. Re- yeah, drag him all to the street. Oh yeah, drug, drug him all the way out to the truck. You know, gut him. You know, obviously gutted him and drug him out to the truck, hung him up, and then uh, there's a couple other guys rolled in with some smaller bucks, and it was just a good day, man. So I don't think we I don't think we saw you this year. Normally, no. we try to get our camps together when we go up for It's one of the few a, years yeah. that we haven't got together. Hopefully, it'll work out this year. Oh, well, yeah. Always, you said what we do the rest of the evening. We always go to the Buck Pole, you know. Vanderbilt? Yeah, the Elkhorn Lodge there or whatever. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Buck Pole. That's something people in uh, outside of, like, Michigan and I think Wisconsin has some. Um, have no clue what I gotta imagine. Oh, really? I gotta yeah, imagine. Nobody Pencil. knows what Hang they are. Hang your deer up and go look at them. Yeah, they don't <laughs> know what that is. I gotta imagine no kidding. Pennsylvania really? has buck poles. I would. Yeah, they I got to. Yeah, you would think so. PA guys are pretty. Uh, this is like a couple states. You got Wisconsin and Michigan, Minnesota, some Pennsylvania. This is like that whole like, it's like try. Guys out west, I talked to them, and they're like, yeah, I didn't even have school on opening day. Right. Because it was cr- they're like, really? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it, you didn't have school because there wasn't a point to have school. Nobody would show right, up. Nobody's right. yeah. there. Nobody's it's taken there. relatively <laughs> seriously here. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a uh, – It's a it's like, a reason why stories like it's Battle It's a state Cruiser holiday. Exist. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I took a week off since I was 12 years old. Yeah. I've been missing a week no matter what I was doing, except when I went on Hurricane Sandy in 2012. It was the only – I missed deer season that year. That sucks. Yeah. And then when I was 18, I got in a bad car accident. I missed deer season. but <laughs> So I guess I missed two. Other than that, I'll be going for yeah, a week. Missing the 15th would be like – It's blasphemous. Almost, yeah, exactly. you know? yeah. It's like, no, you can't miss that You day. can't miss that. Well, are you prepared to write another deer, another chapter in the in your book of deer hunting stories this here in the next couple months? I'd like to, yeah, man. I feel like it's a, I'm always a rushed guy. I'm late to the table. I still got to put my boat away, and just got a lot of stuff going on right now. So, hasn't really hit me yet. But uh, we were up to the U, our property in UP over the Labor Day, and we come home a little early to go check out the deer spots. They did a lot of cutting up there, and I'm pretty excited. That's good, dude. It's you, kind of it made kind of a, a kind of a funnel in my primary spot that I'm pretty excited about. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked. It's gonna be awesome. I'm cutting in the process of lumber in my uh, property in Mayo. Yeah, they've probably cut 20 acres out of the 53 that we have up there. Really? And you know we haven't we see deer up there every year. But we don't see a lot of deer anymore. And just my wife and I sitting on our little porch drinking a beer on Friday night. We had ten a herd of ten deer just walk right yeah. through the back That's of the awesome. Did you get it selective cut or did you like clear cut. cut twenty acres? Or? It honestly almost looks like a clear cut. Yeah, they just went, probably just left a couple of tall trees yeah, kind of thing. They left uh, a lot of little middle-aged oaks yeah. to regenerate that's nice you know and a couple pines here and there but yeah i'm hoping that uh you get some aspen regeneration up there yep. or anything yeah like there's that? one part where we had the aspen just completely clear clear cut so that's we're gonna awesome. get a bunch of yeah, that coming just right up. come back quick that's great yeah they get do. some birds in there oh, i'm so grouse. excited dude yeah i that's haven't awesome. like grouse hunt or woodcock hunt in years and i'm yeah. pretty excited to get back into it and i figure you know my kids are five and two and by yeah. the time they're yeah, like, it'll be like, like money. prime age to hunt yeah, it's going to exactly. be like legit hunting property yeah. that's awesome and you get like this blank canvas to yeah. start with so Isn't you're it, like that's one of the things like a lot of people you know non-hunters especially the like whole like 
they'll go and roll past some place that got clear cut and it was an aspen gro- forest right. or something and they're like oh my god why would anybody do that right. it's like that's what needs to happen yeah right. exactly dude like forest fires used to yeah, do it forest <laughs> fires used to do that but you don't want your house burnt down some something has to happen right like that is like yeah, you, know, you clear cut, get that aspen regeneration. It's amazing. Right, like, we've it, only seen more wildlife since yeah, we cut the trees down. It's ridiculous. It, it's crazy. You cut those down. You, you, the grouse, deer, turkey, everything is everything just go through the roof. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty excited about it. I can't wait to honestly get up there and. Yeah. You know, we're talking about building some bigger box box blinds and stuff yeah. just because. I want to be able to take my kids out there, and I don't want it to be overly miserable. I would build at that. least one, right? right? Just like so when you, it's I wouldn't like do a bunch of them. Thirty, like thirty-five degree rainy yeah, day. Like it's like let's just go sit out there. Right. Yeah. Like you take your kid out, do between like one box blind and like you can backpack a pop-up blind wherever you want right. for the really nice days. But yeah, it's hard to beat. You know, the uh, box blind with little propane heater or something yeah. in it for kids. It's And, it, you know, people are like, oh, it's, you know, you won't see as many deer, all this stuff. And it's not about that. Right. Right? Yeah. Right. I right. want to keep it comfortable. Yeah, exactly. Trust me, there will be plenty of times I'll have them sitting in a tree stand yeah, with exactly. me getting pelted with sleet and rain. Yeah, exactly. And but that can wait, you right. know. You want it to be fun before you go and just yeah, crank exactly. up the miserable they, factor. They need to, there has to be that, like, this is awesome before <laughs> right. you say, this is miserable. <laughs> You'll enjoy it later in life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There, right. There's got to be that time where it's just enjoyable. enjoyable. Right. Those are some of my favorite deer hunts of the whole year, too, is late season when the weather's just wretchedly nasty. Yeah. And just go relax in a nice, comfortable little little shack and yeah. peek out the windows <laughs> and the s- snow's blowing sideways and you're just sitting know. out it's there in the middle of the woods that like 10 degree day with like a 25 mile an hour wind in a pine tree swaying yeah. back and forth right. <laughs> i mean if i think i have an opportunity to get a nice buck i will i will do that i will sit <laughs> up in that pine tree in that weather yeah but you know a lot of times late season i just it's nice to be out there because nobody else is. Yeah, it is. The woods is so quiet, and if it's like nasty weather and just snowing, like <laughs> You're probably not seeing anything, anyways. But <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you do, sometimes, sometimes you, don't, you don't. It seems yeah. like, but it's just I don't know, man. It's so nice sitting out there. It is a great blind. experience, honestly. Yeah, because you can relax. You're not like spending all your energy shivering, so you yeah. can actually still kind of pay attention to everything Dude, around you. It's sitting great. out. In the big woods of northern Michigan when it's snowing. Yeah. It's and then, like, even if you didn't see a deer or you saw a couple deer and you're walking in and it's dark and the snow's just coming yeah. down. Oh, it's awesome. Got your headlamp going. What? I sun, can't snow's imagine blowing blowing past. It's, anything it's that awesome. hardly makes me happier. I'm, I'm excited as hell for season. I've got oh, some I spots I've got to, like, try. I went and did some scouting. What? Monday? Yeah, I think Monday. Labor Day. I went and did some scouting by my house on some public land. Well, not by my house. I live in Southfield, but close enough that it's a <laughs> short drive. Um, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. But uh walked like three quarters of a mile. Had to cross some stuff that most people won't cross. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So Didn't see like any tree stands back where i'm looking so that's awesome yeah it's hard to do in like where you know there's one chunk of public land that's like 10 minutes from here yeah and as i didn't even go out and scout it the first year i moved out here and opening day i was like i'm gonna go drive by there to see how many pickups (laughs) it's like holy shit this whole road is lined with pickups and it's like a 15 acre parcel yeah no way i'm gonna even bother no it's not worth it no there's uh there's an area I hunt that will get like there'll be some cars there opening weekend of bow season, and then nothing. Like, really? I've n- other than that first weekend, I've never seen more than one car for like a two mile, three mile stretch of road. So and that's impressive for down here. I think everybody just sort of like blows out of there thinking, no, it gets too much pressure right, or something. So. Done. 
So mm-hmm. I think everybody, it's the opposite of that happens and everything just moves in there. So I'm not a big believer of the October lull. No, it doesn't exist. I know a lot They're of move. people <laughs> think that you can't shoot a deer in like the third week of October, but they're there. shot deer in third week of October. Somewhere. They still got to eat. Yeah, exactly. You, know? you just got to know where they're at. <laughs> Yeah, they're just well, not they going to the too. stand you've been sitting yeah, exactly. in for two they're weeks. Like, so I've adjust. been sitting in the same stand for two weeks, and the deer quit going there. It must be a lull. <laughs> it's no. the lull. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> hunting bedding, you know, like Dan and Balt does, and John Eberhart for those guys uh, are at opposite ends of the spectrum and have a bit of rift between them. But they both have pretty good approaches, it seems like, given their results. Right. And hunting yeah. bedding done correctly is the is lethal all season long. Yeah, exactly. So you need to know where the deer are <coughs> and where they're going to be at any given point. Right. But, right? but no, there's no arguing that come November first through the twenty fifth or even the end of November. I mean, the month of November bucks uh, are. Well, just if you're in the rut, way it's more crazy. Accurate. The rut is just even you never mature ones. quite know what's going to happen. Right. Even mature ones. Yeah, but I mean, the fe- to say there is a lull where deer just refuse to move, uh, like yeah. they've got the calendar in front yeah, of them. Like, say this two I weeks can't is move off for the board. these two days. <laughs> yeah, that's not the way it works. They're just they've transitioned to a different yeah, they've, pattern. They've than you patterned were, all yeah. the hunters and have exactly. corrected their routes, and you got to plan for that. Yeah, exactly. And then. A guy sitting in a damn 16-foot ladder stand, (laughs) (laughs) and you made a mistake. Yep, that's right. (laughs) (laughs) And you're at the losing end of a Mexican standoff. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) That was in the prime time, though, you know. I I just did a little bit of bow hunting behind the house, and I I fell into the trap to where it was – if it was too, if it's too warm, you're not gonna see any deer. You know what I mean? That's why I had Man. thought growing up because I basically just grow grew up hunting rifle season with my dad Man. and my grandpa. That's our thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm just now developing in the bow hunting thing. But but I have learned the last couple of years. I just stumbled out there like, all right, I got property behind my house now. I'm gonna go out there and sit. Yeah. So I roll up there and it's like, yeah, this sucks. You know, I'm not going to see anything, you know, and then bam, there's a deer right there. I'm like, holy shit, it's 80 degrees. What's this yeah. deer doing here? <laughs> I've shot and my, deer. My hunt clothes smell like bullshit still, you know what I mean? I've shot deer, like, first week of August when it was 85. You know, it was like right. 85 degrees outside, sweating your ass off. Oh, man. <laughs> it's like, like, oh, deer, we don't want to move then. Like, no, <laughs> I don't care. Sometimes they don't have a choice. Yeah, you got to move. They'll move less, but if you're yeah. in the right spot. The biggest deer move. I've ever seen in Michigan was uh, opening day in October. You were living out of state at the time because I was hunting back at the farm, and I'm I'm walking. We The fields leased out to farmers. They plant corn, and then there's woods, and I'm walking down between the corn and the woods, Yeah. and there's a little dog leg in the field, and I'm, I'm like – I'm coming from work. You know, I just left, like, metro Detroit area. I drove an hour, and I'm yeah. throwing my camo, and I'm running out to my tree stand, <laughs> basically, just to sit the last hour of the day so I don't miss opening day of bow season. And I get to that dog leg, and I'm just hustling, and I look over, and he's just standing there. You know, this <laughs> the biggest deer I've ever seen. Yeah. I don't even know. I I hunt in Michigan. I'm sorry. I don't it's know how to score deer. Yeah, exactly. right. <laughs> right. Probably what 100, score is it? 30, 140, 150 130, inch 140. deer. And yeah, he's standing awesome. 20 yards broadside looking at me. Yeah. And I'm just like, fuck. That's all I could say. <laughs> it's like, you know? and that sucks. We stared at each other for what felt like a lifetime. I know I couldn't move. And then he just jumped away. And I literally yeah. just fell to my knees and sat there. <laughs> and like, ever since then, I have walked so slow out yeah. to my tree stand Can't every walk. single time. So You never know. Don't let your guard down. No. <laughs> I got a similar story to that real quick. Two year, I had that two-year low before I shot the nine-point shit. So. Three years ago, I come. I was up north for two and a half weeks, hunted my ass off. That's when we got all that crazy snow up there. Yeah. There was like 36 inches of <laughs> snow. I didn't see shit, dude. It was hard hunting. I come home. I'm all, fr- you know, I'm hunted out basically. But I still got another couple of days off of work. 
<clears throat> so I went out back, got in the tree stand with my 44 Magnum pistol, you know, <laughs> sitting in the stand. And Is that a had, scope on it? Yeah, I got just a fixed power Leopold yeah. on there. Uh, I'm pretty accurate with it. You know, I've never. Yeah, my father-in-law hunts with yeah, it's four. badass. Just you feel like a badass yeah. hunting with it for one. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it is it's not that much different than bow hunting as far no, as range and all that exactly. goes. It's it's almost exactly like bow hunting. Right. So either way, I, well, before that snow had hit up there, it had rained extremely bad down here. And I had just set my tree stand up, you know, and the tree stand sank. Um, so it was on. So the platform was uh, on an angle, right? So I get out there. I'm frustrated. I'm pretty much hunted out. I'm just going out there because I should. You know what I mean? I sit down for like an hour, and after an hour, I'm not seeing shit. I'm like, Jesus Christ! And my back's killing me because my tree stands yeah. on an angle. I'm like, I kind of did a little light scan like that, and I, <laughs> and I just stood up to stretch. And as soon as I did, I seen him rear up, dude. It was from here to the corner of the garage away. 15 yards monster he had snuck in on me just creeping probably been getting shot at all goddamn week or two <laughs> weeks you know <laughs> he, that's he michigan up. <laughs> yeah. if i had a shotgun with buckshot i might have got a shot off but other than that it wasn't happening he was into some tag elders and he had crept right in if i had sat still for another 10 minutes he probably would have crept right out because he was coming right at me i see him rear up his his mate his uh G1s looked like carrots. I'll never forget. Like, that's the analogy I made right away. I'm yeah. like, oh, my God. Like that. Yeah. Monster. Biggest deer I always ever see are in my yard. It's it's right? it's, yeah. it's depressing every suburban year. Suburban bucks are just huge, <laughs> it's man. Like, I see things, like, in July that are, like, just giants. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is not cool. They're just screwing with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no yeah. doubt. Uh, it's uh can't wait we're less than a month away i know man it's Three only weeks. two it's only 10 days till you season i can't wait to get the kid out yeah i'm like scary. super excited well we get will get out with the 44 we will awesome. throughout the season uh anybody that gets a deer that follows the show please uh tag us on any of your facebooks or any of that or just send me a photo and i'll put it up on the blog or uh we're in the process of making a website Awesome. So it should be kind of nice. And a, a lot of the reason that I wanted is to house a lot of the photography from yeah. us on our northern Michigan deer hunts and hunting down here. And then, you know, friends and people, uh, you know, friends of the show and any, anybody that listens. So be kind of neat to showcase all that stuff on a spot that everybody has access. Everybody has access to. So let's wrap this. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go to work and like five hours yeah so i hear that in. yeah <laughs> time is it here 11 it's probably 11 o'clock oh, yeah i'll be up an in hour like six after. hours we said we'd go to i don't think or... i've ever made it to bed at the time i wanted to when i do this it's always <laughs> two hours later uh, no. well yeah. it always yeah. That's a beat the goal. last one <laughs> yeah we'll the, be wrapped up by the time last like, one we did no, we was won't. three hours <laughs> and eight minutes and i left <laughs> two and a half hours into it i just <laughs> set the headset down and had to go i was like i won't be that bad we're like, yeah. oh, we'll talk for 15 more minutes. 45 minutes later, we're like, get a we'll bunch of deer hunters together and yeah, just, that's what happens. just right. add beer. Do yeah, people exactly. listen to these things the whole way through and shit, too? I don't know. Dude, I love long yeah. podcasts. Like, I listen to long podcasts all the time. Really? Yeah. So, I love them. Yeah. I prefer long ones to short ones. Like, like a the lot short of ones are usually really quick. The long ones, they gets much more like conversational and stuff yeah and i agree i like the longer podcasts a lot more too. get into a lot more in you can always stuff. pause them yeah. yeah you know you listen to 15 minutes and you pause it you listen to the next 15 minutes you if you got a half hour 45 minute drive into work yeah. you knock out that pause it i have a job where i can put headphones in you mm-hmm. know and we kind of working by myself sometimes yeah. and i'll be welding or something like that i don't know like, right. Oh, that's what I do. There's some that's days cool. where I can't listen to any, but then there's other days where I can knock out like two or three. Yeah, I'll listen three to hour hours in, on end. You know, sanding oh, or something annoying like sanding. Yeah. You just listen to podcasts all day. Whenever I mow my grass, I got one going for you sure. Mow, ha, ha, that's, I got a 14 year old girl for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, mine's only five. <laughs> Send her over. Mine's only five. I need so to give my working. kids some fertilizer. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> They're not mowing yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like my, I haven't mowed. I've mowed mine like 
lawn like once in three years. It's fantastic. Oh man, I can't wait. <laughs> my son's seven, so that's yeah. where he gets seven. I started my mowing my parents' lawn, which was two acres with a push mower when I was seven. My dad was like, "You're old enough." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ain't like it used to be though. You know, they yeah. fall off, get one bruise, and you're you're yeah, uh, you're in jail or abuser. something. <laughs> yeah. like, CPS is not gonna. Yeah, you, know? exactly. you made your kid mow the lawn. <laughs> yeah, you I saw your kid safe. sweating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Clearly, Does that kid have calluses on his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Making that kid work. <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? Oh God. All right. On that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming right over, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, fun that as hell. Was, that was that cool. Was good time. Can't wait until the we get into deer season here in the next couple of months. We have like some fresh, oh, yeah. fresh stories. Dude, you know what would be the ultimate is to have a podcast in the airstream. Oh, it's happening. Oh yeah. Oh. I mean, up there at deer camp. Hell yeah. <laughs> this whole rig, this whole I built this basically this whole mobile studio so that yeah we can take it up north on us for our hunting camp and stuff. So we'll be set up in the airstream. So you shoot a. You know, some you some shoot, type uh, of battle cruiser two, yeah, <laughs> Megatron, <laughs> whatever. Come, just you pop. gotta have a different rating though. If it's in the heart of deer camp, we're, we're good. Four days in the bush, and you throw a podcast down. We're on the <laughs> internet. People might get offended. Those people can have. Uh, there's plenty of access to other platforms. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. Yep. They can go to another channel. It's the bonus of podcasts. Feel free to comment. You don't have to deal with like networks or something like that. Right. You just yeah. You downloaded it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no one. <laughs> Sorry. No one. Nobody made you. It stopped. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No one per se pays the, us to do this. Right. So Thirty second forward whatever. buttons yeah, awesome. right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we 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 make a you know a rational uh, go at staying PG thirteen. And not, you know, we, uh, that's what I, we're a PG-13 show that floats in and out out of R. Right. <laughs> Deal with it. I don't it. know. Just PG-13 F-bombs. can get pretty bad now, dude. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, no. you've listened to some of these. Yeah. I, <laughs> less bad than my daily conversation. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it goes back to what we said earlier. Usually the kids with the guns and the knives and the bows in their truck are the good kids. Yeah, right. you might say some dirty words, right. but our intentions are always really good. Hell yeah! All right, thanks for listening, everybody. 